What I'm about to show you is an extremely powerful technique for extracting an image from its background. It's called calculations. And in fact, it's been around in Photoshop since the very first version. Calculations allow you to create a new channel based upon the color information of your existing channels. Let's go ahead and bring the channels palette over. And I want you to take a close look at the thumbnails here. You'll notice a thumbnail for the red, green, and blue channels. Each of these makes up the color data that forms the composite image. I can view each channel by isolating them. First off, here's the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. My goal is to find the two highest contrast channels and combine those together. I'm going to go ahead here and make a new viewer. I'll go Window, Arrange, New Window for Munster. And let's set this one to our red channel. And this one to our blue channel. I'm going to press Tab to hide the palettes for a moment. And if we look at those two images, I'm hoping you see there's a tremendous amount of difference between the two. On the left here, our sky is much darker than the right. And the buildings are essentially an inverse of one another. Light areas on this building are darker on the other. Press Tab to bring that back. I'm going to go ahead and close this one down and just keep one window open. Calculations will allow me to take these two channels and combine them to create a new channel. That new channel can be used as the alpha channel, which will contain the transparency. In order to have transparency, however, I need to do a little bit of manipulation quickly inside the layers palette. Currently, the background layer is locked. This means that I can't erase from it or put transparency in it because it is the very bottom of the stack. I need to double click on it and give it a name. I'll call this one Church. Now, a beginner might think, let's just grab the magic wand, and they'll start clicking along, and eventually they'll build up a selection. And you see, though, that that gets pretty ragged. Let's go ahead and deselect, Command D or Control D. Calculations is much more precise, and in fact, it's the same technology behind matte keying, such as Ultimat or Primat. I choose Image, Calculations. By default, the two red channels are loaded, and you see that it's combining those with a multiply blend mode. I said earlier that it looked like my red and blue channels had the most contrast. So I'm going to combine a red channel with a blue channel. However, take an inverted channel to do this. The resulting image is not exactly what we were hoping for. I was trying to attain the sky being a solid black, and the church being a solid white. We didn't quite pull this off yet, but we're almost there. All I need to do is change the blending mode. Different blend modes will result in different new calculated channels. Screen modes getting closer. Color dodge. That looks really good. Let's check if there's anything else that works better. Well, overlay, soft light. I'm going to go back to color dodge in this case. If we click OK, you'll see that a new channel has been added. The channel's good, but it's not perfect. Notice all of the noise area in the sky here? Our building is very well defined. In fact, you'll see that the edges are perfect. Sky, however, is washed out, and we need to improve the contrast of the sky. Now, just because I said the word contrast does not mean that we're going to go ahead and change the contrast of the image using the contrast command. Rather, press Command L or Control L and invoke the Levels dialog box. To restore the full contrast of the image, we need to take the black point 
and move it over onto the histogram edge here on the left. As I move the black further in, it gets crisper and crisper. I have established that this entire area should be black. All of this in here that was originally gray has now been mapped to black. I could pull the white point in a bit too if I want to punch those whites. And then the middle slider can be adjusted. Notice the changes as I move the middle slider. Lightening the grays, darkening the grays. I think the most exciting thing is that this method really works. Look at the level of detail there. Even the windows are successfully grabbed. When I'm satisfied, I can click OK. Turning on all of the channels will show you the masked area. This red is simply a ruby lith mask, and it's identifying where the alpha channel is going to take effect. I'm going to go ahead and command click on the alpha channel, or control click on a PC. And in my layers palette here, I'm going to click add layer mask. You see that it hides the sky. Now to check things out, I can quickly drop another image back there just to see if this did indeed work. I'm going to go out to the DVD-ROM again, click on bonus materials, go to my stock images folder. I'm going to use the photo galaxy image collection here. And I'm just going to look for a new sky. Here we go. Dark cloud. Open that up. I can close my file browser down. I'm just going to take these clouds and move them across. Let's go ahead and reset our workspace. We get all our default palettes back. There's our layers palette. Grab, drag. If I hold down the shift key, it'll drop this image in the center here. Then it's just a matter of moving it behind. And I can press Command T for free transform. You'll see we get our transform handles. We can rotate that. To prove that it worked, let's zoom in. And I'm going to go ahead and change the hue of those clouds. Notice the finest level of details here. Even the windows changed. Now, of course, there's a little blue cast on the image here, and that was area that was reflected on the surface of the church. But if I'm compositing with a similar color, I have absolutely no problems making a believable composite. That's the calculations command. It doesn't work all of the time, but when it does work, it works very well, and it's worth trying out.